Good morning, I'm the Reverend Stephen Page from St. Patrick's Anglican Church. We're taking inspiration for our daily ministerial radio devotionals this month from the world of sports. Ideally, sports are about fun and fitness, but the better you get, the higher the level of competition, the more it becomes about winning first, with fun and fitness becoming just distant considerations. Have you noticed that? Well, this weekend is the kickoff of the American college football season. It will come to an end next January 7th when the national champion is crowned. Last year's winner, you may remember, was Alabama, who thumped Louisiana State in the championship game. Currently, the two teams that meet in the title are chosen by a complex formula of human polls and computer calculations. In a couple of years, college football will move to a playoff system. And it's a good thing, too, because every year there is controversy about the chosen finalists. Not that controversy is anything new. For decades, there was no championship game, so after all of the January 1st bowl games came to an end, polls of sports writers and coaches would determine who was the national champ. And those human voters, they could be swayed by how many points your team scored. That was the case certainly back as far as 1916, almost 100 years ago. That year, Georgia Tech had a powerful team. And their coach, John Heisman, after whom the Heisman Trophy is named, uh, Coach Heisman thought that they could contend for the national title. But, see, the voters of the day cared more about margins of victory as a way of showing how good your team was. So Georgia Tech needed a, a patsy. They needed somebody that they could clobber to have a big margin of victory. Well, Cumberland College from Lebanon, Tennessee, that was the lucky team. Georgia Tech and Cumberland College, they met on October 7, 1916. Cumberland, they got the ball first. And they ran the ball on their first play and they gained three yards. That was not a bad start. Although, sadly, it would be their biggest run of the day. In fact, they would finish the game with a net total of minus 96 yards on the ground on 27 carries. They also lost nine fumbles. Their aerial ta attack was not much better. This was an era of football when there was not a lot of passing, but even still, they completed only two of 18 pass attempts for a total of 14 yards. In fact, Georgia Tech caught more of Cumberland's passes than Cumberland did because Georgia Tech intercepted it six times. See, Georgia Tech utterly dominated the whole game. They scored 63 points in the first quarter on nine touchdowns. If that's a stunning total, well, Georgia Tech matched it in the second quarter and took a 126 to nothing lead into the halftime break. And the only signs of weakness Georgia Tech showed in the game was when they missed two of their eight point-after attempts in the third quarter, and they had to settle for only 54 points in the quarter and a 180 to nothing lead through three quarters. And they let up a bit in the fourth quarter, settling for only 42 points. So, for the game, Georgia Tech rushed the football 40 times, for a, a, a jaw-dropping total of 1,620 yards on the ground and 32 touchdowns. They didn't throw a single pass the whole game. Their 222 to nothing win is the most lopsided game in college football history. It was a massive win, an utter destruction of their opponent, poor Cumberland College. But as big as that win was, Jesus Christ has an even bigger win to his credit. By his sinless life, by his death on the cross, by his being raised to life again by God, Jesus Christ has won the great battle that we face against sin and against the powers of evil, and even against death. Death has been swallowed up in victory, writes the Apostle Paul, and he's quoting the prophet Isaiah. Paul continues in his letter, almost tauntingly saying, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? It's kind of a biblical version of na-na-na-na, hey-hey-hey, goodbye. Well, Jesus won the great victory, and we are the beneficiaries. Thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. 
That means when we join God's team, when we bring Christ into our hearts and minds and lives, we too share in the victory. We can now overcome our opponents like fear and anger and lust and envy. The challenges of life that stump us won't defeat us any longer because of Christ. May God give you the victory, too, through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's been fun sharing some sports devotional thoughts with you this month. Thanks for listening. For St. Patrick's Church, I'm the Rev. Stephen Page.